Let's go. Time. The consumption of coffee is growing on a daily basis. For me, this is incredibly exciting. But for me, this industry is a part of all of it, like it's some of all of its parts, which reminds me of the word in Africa we call Ubuntu, which means I am because we are. And today, I would like to explore this through innovation on barista tools, secondly, post-office processing, and finally, the relationships that bring all of this together. My name is Steve-O, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. As a barista trainer, I've seen the importance of a barista being able to build a bridge to the customer. And this is where innovation comes in. In the past few years, innovation on tools have revolutionized the specialty industry. But for some reason, some of us still fear it. That we have the fear that we might be deemed as redundant. I, however, see this as an opportunity to do what only us as people can do, and that is to connect. And today I want to connect with you as my customer. The coffee that I'm serving to you today is from Colombia, and the variety is oftentimes the backbone of other more exotic varieties. But today, I'm serving it to you as a single variety Red Bourbon. Red Bourbon is known for its incredible sweetness, but when and this is exactly what I look for in a coffee, but when tasting the espresso, I found that it lacked com complexity and acidity. So for this reason, I made use of a post-extraction technique called compound chilling. In front of you, you'll see a frozen sphere. This sphere is there to make use of a tec this technique called compound chilling, where I could trap up to 40% more volatile compounds into the cup, elevating and giving us today a tropical fruit-like acidity in the espresso. I'm now dosing 21 grams in with a yield of 38 grams out. But to highlight that tropical fruit-like acidity, I'm going to be extracting the first 12 grams over this frozen sphere, giving us that harmonious balance. Right, judges, now the tools that I use today enable me to be more consistent, but doesn't take away from our connection. So as I serve you the espresso, may I please ask for you not to drink it just yet, only evaluate the visual, and then to please wait for any further instructions. There we go. In the meantime, while I extract the espresso, please feel free to take a sip of water. We'll be back with you now. Judges, in front of you, you'll see a white disc. This is for you to, play, to please place on top of the espresso as soon as you receive it, to ensure that these volatiles that were trapped into the cup don't evaporate into the air, but become part of your sensory experience today. Right, here we go. Friends, this is for you. That is for you. Thank you. This is yours. And that's yours. Now, please write down what your taste experience. You'll find flavors of passion fruit. This acidity develops as you taste the coffee. Secondly, you'll find red grape. And in the finish, raisin. You'll also find blood orange. 
Your tactile experience will be medium to high with texture that is coating and creamy. And in the finish, you'll find a tannin that reminds me of a red wine. And that's a sensation. Please take note. So just a reminder, those flavor notes, passion fruit, blood orange, and that red wine tannin sensation in the finish. So judges, let me leave you to enjoy this while I prepare your next course. Thank you. Please remove the aroma disc, stirring five times. Thank you. Friends, I'll give you a few more seconds before we continue. You guys ready? Let's continue. With this growing specialty industry, there's a higher demand for more exotic tasting coffees. And this places emphasis on the producer. The producer who finds themselves at the mercy of the environment, but also at the mercy of the buyer. The producer of this coffee, 24 year old Nestor Lasso, saw this as an opportunity to take this red bourbon variety and elevate it into something truly unique through post harvest processing. And I am so happy to be able to serve this to you today. The recipe for my milk course today is a dose of 21 grams in and a yield of 36 grams out. The slightly tighter ratio elevates the body and the sweetness, giving us harmonious balance in the final beverage. Now further to achieve this, I'm making use of a milk blend today. 75% of freeze distilled cow's milk which will highlight the sweetness of this variety, and 25% of oat milk, which will highlight the body of this coffee. And by adding 80 grams of this milk to this beverage, you'll find flavors of, please write down, 60% dark chocolate, a rich caramel, And in the finish, chocolate-covered raisins. That's truly delicious. As I serve you, may I please ask to just continue and enjoy this, because it's so nice. Now, while I, while I prepare this for you, let me tell you about this coffee's fermentation. It's an anaerobic, natural fermentation. The ripest cherries were selected by placing the coffee cherries in a water tank at 70 degrees Celsius, sorry, 17 degrees Celsius for 70 hours. After which they were removed and placed inside another tank where leachates or water from a different fermentation was added back into that tank.
after which they were removed and then dried in parabolic dryer until the coffee reached 11% moisture. But for this coffee to taste the way it does, it had to become soluble. And this was achieved through the roasting time of 9 minutes and 30 seconds and a time of the first crack of 1 minute and 38 seconds. This together and this culmination is why we get to enjoy this incredible coffee. That is for you. Yes, please go ahead, enjoy. This is for you. Over to you guys. This is yours. Thank you. That's for you. And finally. This is yours. Please enjoy. I'll be back with you. Friends, now, up until now, I've been serving you the various components that make up this industry. But for me, the beauty again comes in where they all come together as one. And today, I want to bring these connections to life by using the ingredients from our course today. The first ingredient is my espresso with a dose of 20 grams in and 38 grams out. This for me gives me the best variation of this variety that I love. The next ingredient represents the consumer and their evolving preferences. I'm adding 25 grams of the leftover milk from our previous course, which together with the espresso will give us a creamy lactic texture and milk chocolate flavor. The next ingredient is the coffee pucks that I used in my pre preparation to this competition. Blended in a one-to-one -one ratio with white sugar that extracted the oils from the coffee and formed a coffee saccharum. By adding 20 grams of this, we'll find a new note of a fruity chocolate. Correction, please, that is a sweet muscat. Not fruity chocolate, but fruity muscat. Sweet muscat grape. And then the next ingredient is inspired by the producer. I took a passion fruit that I fermented similar to this coffee for two days at 42 degrees Celsius, which together with the espresso will give us a new note of lychee. And then brought together by the barista. Today, that is me. I'm using an indigenous product in South Africa called rooibos. I extracted this in a one to 10 ratio. And by adding 15 grams of this to the espresso will give us a, in the finish, taking that red wine tannin, moving it to a fine grain tea-like tannin. This is shaken over the frozen spheres from our espresso and the innovation of compound chilling. This will chill the beverage, but not dilute it. Now, as I serve you, please don't drink yet. Please wait until I've called time. A reminder of those notes. You'll find lychee, milk chocolate with a lactic creamy texture. And in, in the finish, you'll find that fine grain tea like tannin. This is for you. That is yours. Now, the ingredients that goes into this, in its own, are wonderful, but together they are incredible. In the spirit of Ubuntu, please enjoy time. <laughs> 